Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again, and... I got you some Bleed Bow action this time around. Uh, for the past few days, I have been playing Bleed Bow as a Scion, Puncture, and Split Arrow are the name of the game. And it's very quite surprising how good Bleed is at the moment on Puncture and on Split Arrow. Uh, it is largely due to Snipe being introduced into the game as a support gem um, a couple leagues ago, something like that. And it is very good indeed. It, is the uncomfortable nature of snipe where you got to stand still channel a big single arrow and then reap the rewards but when it works it works real well uh, but the bleed archetype itself for bows seems to be pretty good at the moment just for clear as well uh, as you can see with split arrow uh, this is mostly the new split arrow that i'm using that kind of splits out similar to how a sniper's mark would work basically whatever you connect with it then um, shoots out a bunch of arrows in a random directions and it can hit like 10, 11, something like that, extra arrows. Or you can use the regular split arrow, which I'll show in a second as well. Uh, overall, the character has done real well, far from, uh, far surpassing my expectations for what a bleed character could do at the moment. And, um, it was an absolute joy to play. So bleed damage uh, is pretty damn good. It's something like 30 to 40 million um, on a fully charged up puncture from snipe. It is sometimes very difficult to get it going though, no doubt about it. But if you don't like the snipe playstyle at all, you can still just get rid of that and do a regular uh, puncture for something like 10 million DPS and just have good, stable, um, solid DPS from a puncture. So this is the regular split arrow uh, for large scale amounts of clear because um, in this build I am using Ashes of the Stars. It is actually quite nice and somewhat um, overlooked from what I've seen on um, these types of builds. Uh, so for the split arrow, Ashes of the Stars does give you extra amounts of uh, arrows. So what this build ends up looking like is something like a D2 uh, bow is on with multi-shot you just shoot out an absolute shitload of arrows covering one half of the screen in a nice 180 arc and uh, it's also actually one of the probably best if not the best um, skills and builds for your pc and graphics there is absolutely nothing going on this is the split um split arrow without any mtx and you can hardly tell i'm even shooting uh, and then the bleed itself barely has any real big animation aside from the bleed pops uh, which are pretty clean and uh, sound very nice indeed. And then the single target does basically just one small arrow that uh, leads, leaves a bleed on the enemy. So it's very clean for your PC uh, and very satisfying with the bleed pops. The bleed pops themselves on a Scion. The best way to get them right now is charms. So that you can get the entire Gladiator Ascendancy essentially on charms or the unique jewel, uh, which will do something like two to five percent explode when you bleed enemies and they die from that uh you can get up to five percent of course so if you get lots of them you can get lots of five percent bleed uh, explosions and then just have really like thick explosions but all you really need is that five percent and then let your fizz scaling do the rest of the work um so I ended up picking Scion for this whole thing because we did want to stack some Adorned action with lots of uh, damage over time multi, lots of Fizz damage, you can even stack some life if you really want, but a pretty common and obviously very powerful play right now uh, would be also Ralakesh Boots with the Maven Belt, lots of frenzies, lots of damage over time stacking, uh, and you could even incorporate Adorned into that setup as well. Uh, I do think there's a good few ways of doing it. I think from what I looked at when I checked uh, Puncture on like Pee Wee Ninja, pretty much no one's running Scion for this shit. I took Scion because we can get a lot of um, jewel sockets, we can get 
uh, Gladiator Ascent sub ascendancy you can either take Pathfinder or Raider depending on how comfortable you want um, certain things to be either filling out suppress or movement speed etc uh, I think it's a very good bleed ascendancy right now uh, especially with charms being able to fill in whatever gaps you need so all in all we did take on a bunch of ubers this is uber maven uh like i said with good well-timed uh snipes and punctures you do kind of need to know what you're doing to be able to time them well to be able to pre-fire at the right times to know when a boss is going to be standing still etc but with good well-timed ones and with ensnaring arrow on your mana forge we are dealing something in the vicinity of 30 million dps uh and there's room for way more if you really want way more uh, but supposedly dot caps and stuff prevent you from doing that. Um, yeah, not sure what else to say. Took on a bunch of Ubers, took on a bunch of content. Very fun build to play in the end. Uh, not sure how well it'll go without charms, if there are no charms next time around. But basically snipe um, plus puncture, still very strong at the moment. And uh, there's nothing too crazy happening in this build, so... All in all, should be something that can be done in the future. Hopefully, we'll see what happens with the Dawned as well. We'll see what happens with Ralakesh. But either way, people have been playing Bleed Bows for the past couple of leagues. And uh, they've been going pretty well. So with that, let me go ahead and show you how I made this character. So here we are. Level 94, Scion. Rather bleed than Gauntlet. Pretty self-explanatory. Sad to skip Gauntlet because uh, I've done pretty much every one this time around. Uh, up till now. And... Uh, they're usually pretty painful for me. Just a bunch of uh, hardcore stressing out while getting absolutely nowhere. Uh, so there's not much point. Decided to just keep making characters on a pretty damn fun league. And uh, I was inspired to do some bleed bow action and um, just went from there. So it's nothing too crazy. Like it's pretty stock standard puncture, split arrow, pick either champion gladiator or scion and then um go from there uh so we did grab a citadel bow with um 50 uh, 56 percent conqueror's fracture uh this costs like a divine and then you just roll a few essences lock a prefix and then um get some kind of fizz damage prefix unveil and uh then lock prefixes again roll attack speed get a shit attack speed roll, randomly get a good dot multi roll, and then craft your own dot multi. That was basically the bow, very easy to craft um, if you have a fracture to begin with and some divines and veil to go from there. Uh, you don't, of course, need that damage over time. It's just there because um, it got a bit lucky, but instead you can have a lot more attack speed. You can also have a um, bleed roll on the bow as a suffix, which... Um, you can do by locking prefix and then doing a fizz reroll if you'd like instead because uh it is still kind of tough in these builds to actually get some bleed charts we get some from the passive tree and that's pretty much it uh so yeah getting bleed chance is actually a little bit of a challenge getting it on your boat would definitely be pretty nice um so what we've got is a scion like i said i went for gladiator because 20 percent more damage over time very nice uh, and then you can take kind of whatever else you want. Uh, I went with Pathfinder just to have easier flask sustain. And then we didn't start anywhere else. We just took extra passives. Um, and then, like I said, we have um, Bleed Explode on your charm. And um, yeah, it's very accessible, very easy to get. You can get it as low as 2%, go as high as 5%. You can stack them more and more and then get more um, percent explodes. So that's what I've got going there. They basically just suppress... Um, and also banner reservation um, for my charm slots. So it is an adorned build using the same adorned I made uh, at the start of the league, 126%, and then going with um, physical damage and then damage over time multiply. These were very cheap fractures. Uh, that's why I decided to go this route. So physical damage will scale the bleed explode as well. So that's kind of why it's um, pretty powerful to do this thing. Um, and then damage over time multiplies. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to get them in um, many like ways uh, across the current game. So this is a huge way of actually getting a lot of fizz dot multi. And then it becomes more important to have just raw bleed damage or um, extra fizz damage. So that's when I started to go for some of these instead. Damage with bleeding fractures. These were super cheap. No one's looking for these. Uh, and then just roll whatever else you want on top of it, either life or damage with bleeding. 
Uh, then Grab did that, which was taken just for a bit of extra suppress. Pretty much mostly just needed some extra suppress and then took whatever else I could on top of that. So it cannot take Fizz Reflected, means that I can run Fizz Reflect maps. And then the Recoup helps out a little bit when I have my decoy totem down. Um, aside from that, we've also got a nice interesting use of Unnatural Instinct. When placed over here, it gives us all of these little bow passives and a few of these um, leech passives. And uh, you get a lot of damage over time from that. And also a little bit of attack speed and some stats and stuff. So pretty nice stuff over here. Um, but the passive tree in general is just traveling and getting dual sockets uh, so that we can get all of our adorned happening. Um, the clusters themselves are basically just trying to get battle hardened and master the fundamentals uh, and then whatever else on top of that. And uh, we have one watcher's eye that does some fizz damage and then some faster bleed with malevolence up. Aside from that, I'm just trying to get a lot of auras into the build. You could go different routes. You could go um, a devouring diadem. You could go quite a bit more reservation. Um, well, yeah, just with a devouring diadem, but you could also do a regular hat that has some reserve um, rolled on it from Loathing Essences or from Eldritch Implicit. I grabbed a Devoto that had 90% cost reduction, multiplier, whatever. Uh, very cheap and hadn't used one in a long time, maybe even ever. So I decided to go with that uh, instead of rolling my own hat. But realistically, it's probably better to roll your own hat. Um, but I'm using an Utulas in this build, so that means I don't get life anywhere else. Um, and that makes this a pretty good hat. And in there, I have my Herald of Purity, my Malevolence, uh, Haste, and Pride. Um, given that it's in a tools, you can't have life anywhere else, so that ruled out something like a Rislathas, but I also think that's kind of a bait. Like, looking at most other builds, they do a Rislathas and a Volatility, and that means that you theoretically have a huge bleed you can apply on enemies. If you don't do Snipe at all, and you just keep reapplying lots of Puncture Bleeds, maybe that's fine. Um, so you can, you know, you take snipe out and then you just be running around with, um, still a pretty slow puncture, but you just be reapplying punctures over and over. But as you can see, even without Rislathas and volatility, my puncture has two to six K physical damage. If you hit once and it's a two K, then that's a really low bleed. Uh, if you hit six, that's a pretty nice bleed, right? Imagine if you're wearing Rislathas and volatility, you're going to have something like one K to 12 K, um, physical damage. So you'll either be hitting for a fucking tenth of your damage or all of your damage. And um, I feel like that's uh, just a bit of a bait, uh, especially with Snipe, though. If you're going to use Snipe, then um, it's probably a bit wrong to do at least both of those. Maybe just Rislathas, but even, even either one, I think, might be a bit of a bait. So we've got that going, and uh, Ashes, as I said, is actually a very nice use in this build that seemed to be a bit underlooked, because with Snipe, it gives you an extra stage, because the quality there is um, extra stage per quality, and that's a huge extra damage multiplier, so that makes Snipe much more worth it in this build. And on Puncture, it gives you an extra 30% more with Bleeding, so instead of just the default... Um, 70% more there, you get that huge extra multiplier. So 101% more with bleeding there. And then on snipe, you get that extra stage, which will be an extra 80% more um, ailments. Pretty damn huge. Uh, but then, you know, it still does mean that you have to wind up for longer and means you have to make sure your mana is fixed. It means make sure your attack speed is doing well. So it does become a bit of a finicky situation. So I haven't really properly fixed mana. As you can see, if I'm just winding up, I can get to eight stages and then I'd have to unleash. Ideally, you are doing a bit better than that. So you can pre-fire for as long as you want. So that's why I still have a mana flask there so that I can hold still for an eight stack whenever I need to. Um, but we can theoretically remove the mana flask at this stage and just wind up to eight and make sure you're getting off that attack without um, missing, but it means that your pre-fire is going to be a bit worse. Uh, so what we've got is also split arrow, getting extra splits. Um, so the split arrow splitting just fires off that one shot and then splits a bunch, uh, or your split arrow of regular split arrow gets a bunch more arrows from um, ashes. So... That's what we've got going on there. Uh, you can probably do Tornado Shot or a bit of Rain of Arrows. If you do that, you're going to most likely want to spec into Crimson Dance. And then maybe you want to, instead of like doing Ensnaring Arrow and stuff, just do no Snipe, no Ensnaring Arrow. And just attack a lot with your Puncture. 
I don't know if that's better or anything, but is what it is. So over here, I've got Mana Forged Arrows attached to Ensnaring and Frenzy. So when I am attacking, as you can see, there's going to be Ensnarings firing off um, and some Frenzies as well. So that's something to be careful of. If you do a Devouring Diadem, for example, you can no longer do Ensnaring Arrow because you're no longer spending any mana. Likewise with Life Tap and just pure life, if you want to cast off of that, you do need to spend mana to have a nice comfy setup like this. But you could instead just do your own self-cast and snaring arrow on things that matter. Um, so keep that in mind. The rest of the build, pretty simple, I guess. Grabbed a fractured mana cost thing just to make mana a bit easier on myself. Rolled it with uh, essence that, you know, has damage over time. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, and then needed an extra slot for an onset ring, uh, which does fuck all. Just a bit of minus mana as well. Uh, and then a war banner over here. Um, and it gets a bit of quality as well, and it's free thanks to the charm. Um, Quiver can do absolutely fuck all for our build, but damage over time, bit of fizz, bit of chaos, bit of attack speed, all there is to it. Um, and uh, yeah, nothing else too crazy. The watcher, I mean, the searching eyes are just a bit more attack speed, and as well as that, some life and fizz. Uh, the links on Puncture at the moment are Puncture, Swift Affliction, Deadly Ailments, Vicious Proj, Snipe, and Brutality. Puncture has a very long base, so 8 seconds. So even with some of this faster stuff, my Puncture is something like 10 seconds at the moment. So bear that in mind that you are applying a large bleed over a long time. You can run around with Sadism. That's what I did for some of um, Sanctum running around with sadism and just one tapping things uh you can get more faster bleed so there's like an elegant hubris you can get, uh, get over here and then just pick these two nodes for 50 damage and 20 faster uh sorry 50 damage each and then 10 faster bleed on each of these so it ends up being 20 percent faster if you want to do that instead it doesn't have to be an adorned build even you can do just like fizz scaling through um through that elegant hubris style or you can do like we said uh, Rallakesh boots and then a maven belt that gives you affliction charges so that would be one of these uh, and that's a pretty common way of doing this type of shit as well at the moment but chose not to do that because obviously pretty cheese pretty op but then again so is adorned at the moment but i do have a pretty basic adorned i'd, ex I'd expect adorned to maybe get toned down next league because 150 is definitely very powerful even this one's very powerful maybe it goes to as high as 100 percent and then it's still probably worth using regardless uh so that's kind of the build not sure if i need to say anything else um yeah just the links over here uh, i'm using chain for all that extra goodness um you can use Orc, Pierce, but um, Chain seems to go pretty well with both both of these split arrows. Um, and you've got to make sure you don't have any global Pierce whatsoever if you want to use Ensnaring Arrow, because uh, it needs to actually land and uh, connect with the target you want to ensnare. If it pierces right through them, it won't do anything. So that's pretty much it. Very fun build. Something you can um, get going without too much currency, but I wouldn't really recommend it as a starter build, as like starting with it. You can theoretically start with a bleed bow, but I don't think it feels super good. So um, it's better off saved for having some money, some established um, league currency, etc., and then making a nice version of a bow bleed. Should be pretty good to just like do all kinds of content. Did plenty of Wildwood, plenty of um, map clearing and uh some uber bossing but it's not gonna be the best for any of that stuff just pretty damn good overall with that thank you very much for watching i'll see you guys next time